And God is trying to take you out of it through revelation. Daughter, see the problem that most people have with being convicted by the Holy Spirit that is in you or I is that they don't have revelation. And without revelation, then you're pretty much living a life, lack of understanding. And every time someone come to you with a word of correction to convict you to save your life, you instead mock them and drive them away and turn them away. And you instead want to do to them worse than you have done before. How can a man of God come to you and want to save you or even come before you and you want to do them worse than you would do somebody that's lost? Even if the man of God is wrong about something, why do you then now want to do them worse? Isn't it the same God you serve? Isn't it the same man of God doing the same work? Then how is it that their goal is to convict you to change based on what they believe is right and your goal is to tear them down? Your goal is to do worse with them. Your goal is to not let them be judged because you feel that whatever they brought is judging you. It's not judging you, it's convicting you and only the Holy Spirit has the ability to convict. So when you see people are convicted because God has given you a word to take to them so that he can try to get them out of the mess to save them, know that the Holy Spirit is at work in us. For everybody that is out there that is bringing a word, glory be to God, to a nation, to a people, to a ministry, to a pastor, please know that only the Holy Spirit can convict them. Your job, guess what your job is? You have one job to do. You do not have a job of conviction. That is the Holy Spirit's job. Your job is obedience. So when someone come up against you for being obedient to the Holy Spirit, they are coming up against the law of obedience. That is the very law that got us into this problem that we have broken. I minister to everyone that God has given a responsibility, that God has given a word. It doesn't matter how big the word. That's why we cannot get anything corrected. Nothing can be torn down. People are not being set free. People are not being healed. Nothing is being fixed. People are truly not being, our churches are not being restored. This is not happening because people do not want the Holy Spirit to convict them. People do not want others to obey God. People are continually fighting against the will of obedience. It is the reason why Christ demonstrated to us what obedience looked like because he knows our heart. He knows that man has the ability to steer people to disobey him. So not only he didn't stop there, he gave us gifts. He didn't stop there, he gave us authority. He didn't stop there, gave us power. He didn't stop there, give us faith. He didn't stop there, make us fishers of men. He didn't stop there, he gave us a commission. He didn't stop because he knows. So I pray for each and every person that has a call on their life, that carries the gift that Christ has given of evangelism, prophet, pro, um, prophet, uh, apostle, that has the gift of pastor, teacher, and for every lay person that has submitted and surrendered to those individual in ministry that carry those gifts, every person that has committed their life to serving in the capacity of minister, uh, usher, uh, any one of those. I pray also for bishops. I pray for those on the wrong side and the right side, but I pray for the ones that are being obedient to God. 
that are answering to the call? Do you know what it takes to decrease so that God can increase? It's this kind of narcissistic personality that we are seeing out there from those who are puffed up by titles, puffed up by levels, puffed up by how long they've been doing it. I got news for people. Christ has only been in his ministry for three years and he was God Almighty in the flesh. The problem that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribe, the problem that they had with him, the leaders of, of, of the temples and the synagogue, the government didn't even have that problem with him. The synagogue, the same people, God's people brought it to the government. The problem that they had with him was who was he to think that he is God? Who was he to think that he is the people's king? Who was he to correct them? Who was he to preach to them? Who was he to have authority over them? When Christ read the word from the very first time, when Christ read the word, he read with authority. You know what most of our problem is, is that we do not exercise authority, not authority over others, but authority within ourselves that the Holy Spirit has authority in us. Because we're not giving the Holy Spirit the full room. We want to satisfy man and protect man. Let the Holy Spirit be at work in you. Let him use you. The Bible says when Christ came out of the wilderness, that was enough trials and tests and tribulation that he has gone to through, that the Spirit has led him through his fair share of the world that he was carrying on his shoulder. Ain't nobody know what your wilderness looked like. Ain't nobody understand what you had to go through before you got to the word. Ain't nobody understood your life. There is no such thing as new minister, young in ministry, because what makes you a minister is not the date and time that you have been ordained. What makes me a prophet? I was born this way. And that is not based on ego. That's based on the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. When I know who I am, because in order to say that you were born a prophet, you have to be able to hold the accountability to holiness. If I want to stand in holiness in that manner, I don't care about who's going to challenge me because at the end of the day, God is looking for us to be holy. It's about holiness. I am not going to debate with any man the moral or morality or my action, my characteristics, and my attitude towards my ability to be holy and my ability to preach holiness. There is no man that can challenge me on holiness and think that it is okay because I am speaking, preaching, and requiring holiness. Now, as for the other things that is irrelevant, then I understand. But as it come to the standard that the Bible talk about, the standard of living that we ought to have, the standard of holiness, because Father in heaven is looking for glory and his glory, glory be to God. The glory chamber is running dry because man cannot even glorify him because they're not holy enough. Something has to change. In order for something to change, that means there has to be a generation that's going to rise up and correct the generation before, the generation now, and the generation to come. If something is going to change in the body of Christ, no age, no number is going to do anything about it. Because if it was about the older generation, it would have been changed already. It's not about whether you're on internet. It's not about whether you have a church building. It's not about whether you have a street ministry. Oh my God, I could be sitting just at a 
gate and God could come to me. See, you don't understand. Peter did not have a church. So you don't get to tell somebody until they have a church, they can't talk to you. You don't understand the very disciples when God equipped them and ordained them. Those were men that were accountants, that were lawyers, that were thieves. When Christ left, they begin ministry they begin to minister the gospel at that moment and i want to tell you something the disciples were called to correct an institute ah uh, so nobody can say look at paul i remember in the bible when i begin to read and i see that paul at one point addressed peter what am i talking about if Paul was addressing one man that walked with Christ in this year generation, they would condemn him and chastise him. But I remember Paul stood up to Peter, Peter who was the friend of God, Peter who walked with God, Peter who cut off a man's ears for God, Peter who denied God, Peter who God asked Peter, do you love me, feed my sheep? Peter that God ordained himself, Peter that God called himself, Peter that God teach, Christ taught him how to be fishers of men, Peter that Christ used to walk on water, Peter that the Bible talk about, this was Peter, but I remember reading the scripture and Paul was standing up and correcting Peter, Paul who was never, never standing up before Christ. Paul who never had an opportunity to walk with Christ was never in a position other than when he met Christ at the road of Damascus. He had an encounter. Peter had a relationship. Uh, you don't understand. Some people get so comfortable with God that they forget why God called him in the first place. Some people have been doing something for so long. They have been doing it. Nobody have been correcting them or nothing. So they get comfortable. But let me tell you about Peter and Paul. It was Paul who gained his knowledge through revelations. He tell you over and over, I did not learn what I learned by seeing everything that you saw. I got everything that I knew through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. It's the same Paul that wrote the gospel. So if you're a pastor today, that's telling anybody that you can't be corrected by another young pastor. You ain't read Paul epistles yet. You haven't studied the Apostle Paul yet. You shouldn't preach anything about the Apostle Paul. You shouldn't even surrender, submit, or use his writings for nothing. Because Paul challenged Peter. Paul says, wait a minute. How can you, Peter, who saw Christ, walk with Christ? And I'm paraphrasing. For those of you who are going to challenge me academically, and where did I get my degree? And when did I learn about God? You don't even want to go there. But we're going to stay at the subject of hand. Ah, Paul said to Peter, and I'm paraphrasing, you walk with God. You done hang out with him. You sat there the last supper. I'm paraphrasing and being extra, if you will, because you have some charismatic pastor who when you begin to preach holiness, they got a problem. So let me charismatic up it for you. Huh? So here was this man now named Paul, the apostle Paul that is looked upon today. Almost every message that has been written and almost every message that has been preached that took churches to mega church came from the apostle Paul. Most message come from Paul. So let me tell you what Paul did. Paul addressed Peter. He said, how can you, Peter, that walk with Christ, ate with Christ, watch him being crucified. You denied him. He prayed for you. He forgave you. He saved you specifically. Specifically, he told you the commission specifically. He trained you himself for three years specifically. He came back and he spent more time with you after that specifically. How can you now sit with the Gentiles and do what they do and accept? Expect them to become like you when you're becoming like them. See, the problem with some pastors is that they are preaching itching ears word and they can't be corrected. I don't care. My sons and daughters in the gospel can correct me any day because there are some times you might lose your way. 
sometimes the spirit might frustrate you. Sometimes you might come up against something, some temptation. There's a reason why the scripture says, and lead me not. That's why Christ tell you to pray that way, because the Holy Spirit can lead you into temptation, and God can lead you into temptation. He may never tempt you, but he will lead you for the devil to tempt you. Who do you think you are that God can't lead you into temptation? Ah, see, you ain't never gone through nothing, maybe, because there are some pastors, including the ones that you're trying to defend, that will probably shut you down and tell you that you're wrong. See, the real pastors who have been in this thing forever and has gone through some stuff and has probably have some young children that are coming up in the gospel, that greater things than them they know that they themselves has poured into them. Uh, only a puffed up pastor would think that the very people that they're raising can't exceed them. I pray to God that every children that I have that is under my ministry exceed me in extraordinary way. I pray that they exceed me to where they could correct me pray for me. Ah, oh, glory be to God. Protect me. I pray that I never outdo my children, but my children outdo me. Because if then, what do we have? A word that is stuck on the same thing? No fresh prophecy? No fresh um, revelation? Nothing is new? I understand that things that are made, nothing is new under the sun, but I serve a God that's a God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That means there's something that God is saying today that he ain't never tell you. There's something that God could tell my prophetic son that he didn't tell me. Who are you talking to about this mess? People are jumping on the bandwagon because they lack knowledge. Ah, the scripture says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Not perish, but destroyed. They are broken to pieces because they're looking for a message that could make them feel good. I don't want to make anybody feel good with a message. I just want to obey Christ. If Christ, if Christ said to preach it, the Holy Spirit tell me to preach it, I'm going to preach it. Uh, do you know how hard it must be for a young minister in the gospel that is in the position of Samuel, that God is looking at you and telling you to go ahead and tell Eli that you're going to kill his children? Do you know what that must have been like for Samuel? Do you know what it's like when a young minister, like when Christ showed up on the scene? Uh, I always say when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he looked at everything that man has been doing for years. I believe the reason why he had that experience experience in the garden. It is my belief that he took on the sins of that world that day. And he look at men with their ego. He look at men with their sin and their mess. And he begin to say, wait a minute. This is just not enough time for me in the flesh to do this. This is not even my will to do this. He had a will. His will was not to do it. His will was to disobey it. But because he's not a disobedient God, he gave up his will for God's will. How would you feel to know that because of you and your mouth, nations were held back because that same minister probably have a respect for you and your ministry. They probably weren't even talking about you specifically. They probably looked up to you. But here you go with your mouth trying to speak something to condemn them. Ah, if I could tell you like Christ told, glory be to God, the woman, glory be to God, who was going to be stoned. Ah, tell that young minister right now, just go ahead and pretend like Christ is sitting you riding on the ground, riding in the sand. Just ignore them because just like he told them he's about to tell you, just like he told her, I do not condemn you. Let no man condemn you because you're obedient to God and bringing the gospel. If God tells you that in this time, this is the warning that I need you to give. This is the prophecy that I need you to give. I promise you something. It is not going to feel like what you want to do. It's not going to look like what you want to do. It's going to go against everything you desire to do. It's going to go against every friend, every family. 
That's why the word tell you that when you got the gospel and Christ, you're probably going to cause some serious divisions. Divisions amongst mother and daughters, fathers and sons, sisters and brothers. It's not about that. Uh, when you got the word down inside of you, you don't understand when you speaking out a term and you calling somebody a young minister. You don't understand they might be just accepting their to minister but that don't mean that they're a young minister that person probably could have gone to hell and back ah uh, they probably mm. got from god to pick up their call pick up their mantle that person probably sat for 20 years deliberating about men like you that is going to condemn them when they speak the truth they probably look at the truth and see that the truth goes against the grain. They probably look at the truth and see that the truth goes against everything that everyone else believes in. They probably struggle day and night for 10, 20 years. They were probably like the woman with the issue of blood. That thing was probably bleeding over in every area of their life. They probably have lost marriages over ministry. They probably have lost children over ministry. They probably have lost sisters over ministry, career over ministry, mother over ministry. I don't know about them, but I know about me. I know yeah. my died. I know my daughter died. I know my twins died. Last month, my second dog died. And I know that every year, many months, uh, uh, somebody or something was taking a blow for me because God was keeping me. So every time God tell me to do something, guess what? You ain't going through what I'm going through. Uh, just to be obedient or disobedient. You not the one with this mantle. You not the one that gotta lay in your bed at night and cry because you're seeing dead people. You not the one that gotta lay in your bed and cry at night because you miss your daughter. You ain't the one that gotta lay in your bed at night Paul had an infirmity. Paul had a thorn. And God didn't even take it from him because God wanted him to stay on the straight and narrow. You don't know what that person's infirmity is. You don't know what that person's thorn is. You don't know if just like me, every time that person step away from what God tell them to do, God just take that little thing and turn it a little bit more to get you to line up. Because he said in his word, where Paul is weak, he's strong. So I rely mm. on the strength of God every day. So I ain't no going to tell me how to preach the gospel but i am going to submit and surrender but here's who i'm going to submit and surrender to i humble myself before god and i submit to a spiritual mother or father i will have five of them if it takes five but here's why i submit to them they're not intimidated by me they're not afraid of me they know me yes Guess what? They know the Holy Spirit in me. So when I speak, they know if it's the Holy Ghost. I don't want to submit to nobody who don't even have the Holy Ghost inside of them, who don't even know how to detect the Holy Spirit, or don't even know how to detect when a demon stands before them, or don't even know how to minister to people. I don't want to submit to nobody that's going to call people out for doing the work of God. That somebody give a general prophecy or somebody give a general revelation or somebody's preaching the truth. And because you got the microphone on the platform and because your platform is not a cell phone and because your platform is not virtual, then you're going to be sarcastic, narcissistic, and a bully. I don't want to submit to nobody like that. Not because I am puffed up, but because I got the Holy Ghost as my daddy. You don't understand. Yes. I serve Yahweh. And to Hallelujah. take down a little bit more to you so that you can understand how ah, Yahweh is sit down uh -huh. on his arm and Christ is interceding for me. The last time I check my daddy Jesus Christ the last time I check he got a, a hole glory be to God in his side that 
keep reminding God, this is why I want you to forgive her. Every time I do something wrong, the last time I check, I'm convicted by the Holy Ghost. Uh, sometimes uh, it's a 10-year-old, a 9-year-old, a 2-year-old. My nephew even, he was born in a house. Uh, his mama is, is that there's the whole folks roaming around in their house, not the devil. So if I go over to my nephew that, and he corrupted sometimes out of the mouth. But you, what word are we reading? Are we reading a different word? Out of the mouth of babes, a baby. Sometimes my nephew say something to me, auntie this or auntie that. And I'm telling you that thing convict me so much. My nephew, oh God, he's not a pastor ordained. He didn't start ministry yet. But I'm telling you, because I know God could use a donkey. Uh, because I know if I don't cry out, the rocks will cry out. Because I know that God could use anyone. I have seen God use Paul and turn him into Paul. I've seen God use Paul the king over Israel. I've seen myself. You don't understand. There's a reason why people like David see some of the people right now, they need to learn from David. Sometimes, they executed way too quick. You worried about the minister and the ministry and the women who are preaching gospel. Sometimes you see them, their heart is full. They really want to say woman, but they just stick to what they're trying to say. Uh, just so that the masses could accept it. Because if they know they really speak what's on their heart, uh, that it won't be accepted, it will be rejected. My God, sometimes, glory be to God, you don't understand. Some of them are ordained and instituted and installed way too quick. Look at King David. Oh, I got a son, my God. I already could see that I won't even be able, when I'm old and look at his shoes that he walk in, I won't be able to even stand next to that shoe. That's the type of calling that's on his life. He's humble enough to sit under my ministry. But guess what? I already know that so much he's going to do is things that is going to leave me profoundly baffled. I'm going to see things happen in his time and his ministry that I didn't even know exist because every time I think I know something in the gospel, the gospel is so alive and well. The word is so well that every time I think I'm done preaching message, there's another message. Uh, there's at least 40 message inside of one scripture. So any man puffed up enough to think that there is no room in them to learn, that means there's no more life left to live. You minimize the it goes in you and you cap out the Holy Spirit in you to think that there's an age cap and that there's a class that you're supposed to preach to. The leader of the synagogue. Uh, what about them Jesus people? Are there person people that is coming in the generation that is going to walk like Jesus? Act like Jesus, act like Jesus, and look like Jesus. I ain't look nothing like them yet. I'm not even going to say that. They're going to correct me. They're going to correct them. And they're going to correct you and him. There are some people that's coming up in the next generation that is going to catch me sometimes being a part of things that's not even out yet that I'm not even aware of. My God, there is so much word in the Bible. There is so much word in right now. There was so much dependency pros. There is so much parchment. On you. I didn't mean to get logical on you. I didn't mean to exergeze on you. I didn't mean to do apologetics on you. But sometimes uh, people pull out the people you. Don't let my age fool you. When you see my children, you see me. Reason why because the Bible tells me that you shall know the truth. You don't understand. 
I will correct them when they're wrong. I got sons that are prophets and ask every single one of them when I see them say or do anything that is not looking even nowhere close to holiness or even a little bit far from holiness. Guess what I'm going to do? They'll tell you my mama will call in a second and correct me. See, that's the type of thing. And if I am out of order in any way, my own children will call me and correct me. That, that's the type of living that we need. Have you read the Bible? Do you see the things that King David was doing? Ah, uh, and that was a man after God's own heart. I was telling you about my baby son. I called him my baby son because sometimes based on the calling on his life, I just got to keep him a little bit humbled before God now for me. But I got to keep him meek. Why? Meekness is when you got power under your control. I make sure none of my children are humble before men, but they are humble before God. How do I teach them that? They cannot be humble to me. I don't want any of my spiritual children. So, to me because humbleness is when you surrender to power i don't want them surrendering to my power i want them surrendering to the power of god the power that be but what i want them to do is find a way to control the power in order to be meek like christ was meek in the earth and I'm telling you about my boy. My boy got such a gift on his life. People in this world ain't never going to see and hear tongues the way that he speak it. They ain't never going to see miracle the way that he do it. They ain't never see nothing like this yet. He ain't never seen nothing like this yet. He's only 15, 16 years old. He reminds me of David. And I tell him every day, see what people don't realize is David was anointed at 15. David was anointed at 15 years old. David would have David still do after all that. Uh, God was so wise. God made it. from everyone. David sees some of you didn't take your first kill away from everybody. So you come out puffed up in ministry like you're this and you're that. Your first, your first miracle, somebody put you on the pulpit and people get to see you prophesy. Matter of fact, I ain't trying to get in trouble, but some of them will give you the information to prophesy about just to prove that you're a prophet. Lies. But look at David. David kill a bear and he kill a lion and nobody was there when he did it. His brothers didn't even know that he did it. Sometimes God will take you through that period of training where God move you away from everyone and everything and give you a few sheep. I remember when David was going after this uncircumcised Philistine. Look at the way David speak. I'm telling you, my son, remind me of David because sometimes I got to say, what is that boy saying? He is so over the top when, when he enters a room. That's the same way that David enters the room when David show up on the military base he said where is this uncircumcised philistine that you are talking about and why in heavens are you guys afraid of him don't you know we serve a big god and then his brother oh, him evangelist and said what you doing down here and who did you leave with those few sheep look at the mess he's trying to be little david that's how some people are didn't even know that he was talking to his future king he knew because he anointed him but he never th thought that it was going to come to fruition because the last time he checked david was still man in sheep uh david was about to be promoted but to nothing big to just play music for saul uh david wasn't doing anything important in his mind but david was in the wilderness uh, having <laughs> killed bears and lion what bear and lion did you kill what did you go through in your life behind closed doors that have humbled you before god what did you go through 
could that be the reason why you ain't taking off no head off of no Goliath? Could that be the reason why the only thing you have inside of you is sarcasm, is condemnation, is the ability to put people down? See, I was talking about this this week. My God, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I was talking about this this week. We got to love each other like God loves us without conditions. See, people have too much conditions. Why they got to preach the way they preach? People put restraining orders on you. See, some of these people can't even leave these churches because there is a condition for leaving. I was speaking to someone this week that was telling me they are not welcome back into a certain church because that certain church, when you leave, the pastor is very funny about people going back to the church. Now, what kind of mess is that? Call me out and correct in that. That is some hot mess. Why? How many times have you turned away from Jesus? How many times have you turned away from God? How many times have you gone back to do the same thing? How many times and God still welcome you back into the fold? Stop condemning people and correct people. I would rather any day to correct than condemn. I would rather any day to love than show hate. I would rather any day to chasten you. I don't care how old you is. I don't care how young you is, because here's the thing. The older you are may be the reason why I want to correct you even more, because I refuse to let my mama, who is 87, die with sins uh, that has been in her in bad ways and bad thinking. I don't care if she's my mama. I'm still going to correct it if it's God's way. See, Eli wish that somebody would have corrected him sooner. <laughs> Eli wish that Samuel was born earlier. Eli hoped that his sons wouldn't die. Too many pastors are dying young. You talking about uh, how does somebody correct who? What about the pastor that died at 50? What about the pastor that died at 60? What about the pastor that died at 70? And maybe on his deathbed, something came up uh, that he didn't handle. Ah, oh, Jesus, uh, don't you hope uh, someone had preached something that he was flipping through the channel and got convicted by a young minister. Sometimes I'm more convicted because when I look at the person that's ministering to me, they don't look like me. They don't sound like me. They're not even uh, smart, educated, or whatever you want to call it. Some of you just act like you're too smart, too educated. You're too wise. Oh God, you're too excited. Experience. You have too much values. Some of you just need to humble yourself before God. Some of you need to recognize the Holy Ghost in people. Some of you need to welcome change. Some of you need to escape, escape from Sodom and Gomorrah. Escape and save thyself. The scripture says in Genesis 19, uh, verse 17, and uh, verse 18, uh, escape for thy life. Uh, look not back behind you. Uh, look not back. Uh, too many pastors uh, are turning into pillar of salt. Uh, too many pastors are looking back uh, because the fire in the back uh, seem greater than nothing in the front. Uh, I'm speaking to somebody. I don't care what type of fire your ministry is burning with. I don't care if it ain't the Holy Ghost, I don't want it. If it's not Jesus, I don't want it. I don't care what type of fire is in Liberia. I don't care what type of fire is in Nigeria. I don't care what type of fire is in Pakistan. I don't care what type of fire in America. I don't care what type of fire in Canada, China, Asia, Gambia. I don't care what type of fire in Costa Rica. I don't care where the fire is. If it's not the fire of God, let it burn and burn everybody with it. I'm escaping for 
all my life. If you didn't want to come out of the mess when we told you to, then God is going to destroy it. You could sit in it. Let me warn you about something. The more people, the more problem. Ah, they tend to tell you that the more money, the more problem. It's the more people, the more problem. If you show me a mega church, I'll show you mega problems. Ah, if you mm. show synagogue, I'll show you multitudes. There's a reason why there was always a multitude behind Jesus. There is a reason why he shared, why he showed us uh, how to feed the multitude. Ah, uh, because the multitude, uh, the more people uh, that you are faced with uh, is the more sin that you are faced with. Uh, the more people that you are faced with uh, is the more demons they carrying for you to cast out, uh, is the more situation. Uh, so maybe it is instead of you thinking one pastor got it all under control. Just maybe it's the young ministers that need to go in and help. Maybe it's the young ministers that need to... I know there's no such thing as a fresh anointing, but there is such thing as a fresh person with a fresh perspective and a Holy Ghost. The Bible says, suffer the little children to come on to me. They are children in Christ, my God. If you see somebody that's just coming up in the gospel, they're probably more innocent. I'll tell you what I know. When I just stepped into the prophetic, when I just stepped in, notice I say stepped in, because I was born a prophet, but I didn't step into what God called me to do. But when I finally answer and step in and accept that ain't nothing going to change unless I do something about it. When I step into this thing, I believe it is my belief that I saw clearer, that I hear clearer because all the mess about church, I didn't experience it yet. I didn't experience people trying to initiate me yet. I didn't experience people telling me that they will give me a name or two. I didn't experience that mess. So now that I know that stuff and I've seen that stuff, guess what's happening to me? I'll show up at an event and I could hear their mess, but I don't want to call it out sometimes because I've had the experience of what happened to the people who call it out. Uh, sometimes you get caught up in the mess. That's why Prophet S. Nicole don't listen to nobody messages. I try not to do that. I don't want to hear nobody messages, nobody prophecy, so that when I'm prophesying, I ain't prophet lying. There's too many prophet lies out there. There's too many people out there collecting seed, uh, prophesying prosperity, prophesying car. Uh, God has everything that you need. I don't want to prophesy to you really. I just want to tell you what does say of the Lord. But the prophetic is not just about prophecy. The apostolic is not just about churching. That's not what it's about. Evangelism is not but just but about teaching and preaching. Ah, pastoral is not just about being a pastor of a church. There is more things to this thing, and many of it comes to the realm of correction because there is a lot that is wrong with the world. The world today is not what God wants it to be. This is not the plan that God has for you. And it is certainly not the plan that God has for me. So if this is the world that we're faced with today and looking at today, then there is some correction that has to be done. Someone has to do the correcting. But no one should say that the correction should only be done by those in higher ranking. Now, God help us and God bless us. I pray in the name of Jesus that we don't keep looking back. I pray that no one is able to turn into a pillar of salt because they're concerned about their message yesterday. I speak over every pastor, young minister, who has been deterred, who has feel shut down from any accusation and any claim that what they have 
spoken or said that corrects the body of Christ, if it does, only if it does, and if it does with grace, if it does, I lift right now the negative mouths and lips off of you. I break that curse of bullying off of you now. And every spell that was spoken over you negatively, that was initiated about you to make you feel less than, to stop you from going forth in your ministry, to continue to preach the gospel and speak the truth and reveal what does say the Lord, I break everything that is trying to stop that. I come against it. The Lord rebukes it. I put all of your enemy before God right now and the Lord rebuke them in the name of Jesus. I do not need to fight your war because I hand it over to God for you. I hand it over to Jesus. We got to turn it over to Jesus. We give it to God right now. We give it to God right now. We give it to God. My God, we give it to God right now. And we call holiness and the Holy Ghost to take precedence over our life and over everything in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Daughter. Amen. Ooh, amen. 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 My God. I'll just say, Father, thank you for this word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, 